Welcome back. Um, David, let's talk about the uh, how the homeowners navigate this current housing landscape. It is uh, spring, so we are seeing more homes on the market, but as you said, inventory is still tight. I assume it is still a seller's market, or do buyers have some negotiating room compared to the last couple of years? I think buyers had a window where they had some negotiating room, but I, I think that window's gone. That Again, with inventory so low, there's just much more demand in the market than supply. And I think we're very much, at least in the GTA, I think we're very much in a seller's market. So how do they navigate um, the mortgages right now? Should they go fixed or variable or fixed for a short time? What do you suggest? It really depends on the borrower. There is no one size fits all solution, but generally speaking, and I write this in my blog, if people are looking for the safe middle of the road pick right now, I think the three year fixed rate is the way to go. If you go with a one or a two year fixed rate or a variable rate, you're paying a big premium over longer uh, uh, fixed rate alternatives, basically of about three quarters of a percent to 1%. And to me, paying a big premium up front on the bet that rates are gonna come down in one or two years is a bet. Um, it may happen, it may work out great, but um, to me, it's an aggressive bet. Um, conversely, if you lock in for five years, uh, then you face the risk that after the, the biggest spike in rates we've seen in four decades, it's reasonable to expect that rates should moderate and come down somewhat. And if you lock in for five years, then I think it's it's um, you run the risk that you've locked in for too long and that rates will fall near the back half of your term and you'll wish you were coming up for renewal sooner. So to me, and again, it really is just my opinion, um, three years feels like the right amount of time to allow for the Bank of Canada and the U.S. Federal Reserve's rate hikes to do their, their job and, and, and to bring inflation down without locking you in for so long that um, it, you're, you're stuck with a higher rate looking at, at, at rates dropping and not being able to take advantage. David, let's let's talk about um, protecting homeowners, um, in some cases really from themselves, right? Because the stress test was there and it was designed for, for this reason. Um, what are your thoughts on, on how the stress tests are working right now? Well, first of all, the stress test did its job. Um, I've, I've been a big supporter of the stress test from the time it was implemented. When rates were at one and a half and 2%, it was important to ensure that uh, anyone buying a house and taking on debt could afford for rates to normalize. And back when rates were at one and a half or 2%, we were qualifying everybody at about where rates are now, at about 5.25%. That was a smart thing that our regulators did, and it protected us uh, from ourselves. There was so much frenzy in the market back then that people would have borrowed uh, however much uh, lender would have lent them in many cases. So the stress test had a very important function and anyone in my industry should be grateful that uh, it was implemented and, and, and not too many were at the time originally. Uh, right now, uh, when rates are back to their 25 year average levels of about 5%, qualifying every borrower on a rate that's 2% higher is much more onerous. It is making it tougher for people and it's hard, uh, Sajel, because right now with house prices still on the way up, um, and quite frankly, all of these rate hikes not doing a whole lot to cool demand, it's hard to argue that anything should be done with the stress test uh, over the short term, because again, it is causing people to, um, uh, saving them from themselves in some cases. Um, but the theoretical economic argument that people should be able to afford 7% rates if they're being qualified today at 5% rates and at renewal, uh, they'll have a principal pay down, uh, reducing the mortgage off of today's balances. There's an argument that maybe right now plus 2% is theoretically onerous, but given the froth we're seeing at least in the GTA market, not as much, but still some, um, I think our regulators are, are inclined to, uh, as you say, keep protecting growers from themselves in the meantime and uh, and to allow the stress test to stay as is. We have 45 seconds to you, to the next break, David. Is there anything that you would like to see that, that could protect homeowners a bit more? I think there'll be a time when reducing the stress test uh, is, is, is well worth consideration. 
Um, but the problem with, with regulations is the law of unintended consequences. And I think right now, given all the volatility in the market, I don't, I don't see any major areas of weakness. There were some changes made by the regulator, for example, limiting the, um, uh, the borrowing capacity on home equity lines of credit. Those changes will be kicking in. And um, right now, I think, we've, uh, I think we do well to, to allow some of this volatility to sort itself out and to maybe reevaluate when things settle down a bit. 